गणेशाय नम सरस्वत नम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरी वो ये कदंताय विमे वक्रतुंडा धीमह तो दंति प्रचोदया ओम श्री साई राम आई ऑफर माई लविंग प्रणाम्स at the lotus feet of our most beloved lord bhagwan sri satyasai baba it is indeed a matter of great blessing honor and privilege for me to once again invite the ardent devotees of bhagwan sri satyasai baba the vedic knowledge seekers and the learners to this divine satsang being organized by sri satyasai samyukta shruti shreni under the banner of sri satyasai seva organization today for this 26th episode under the gama agama lecture series we have with us yet another pious devout and ardent sevak of of our dear lord to share with us his rich experiences and knowledge on the vedas being the foundation of indian culture and spirituality he is none other than sri narayan prasad sir sri narayan prasad is an alumnus of sri satyasai bal vikas he has been associated with bhagwan baba in the divine mission in various roles over the years to begin with as an office bearer he was inducted as the state youth coordinator in odisha this happened way back in 2009 later he was blessed with the opportunity of leading the vedam as the vedam coordinator from 2012 to 2013 this paved the way and by bhagwan's grace he was anointed with the responsibility of being the state vice president of sri satyasai seva organization odisha from 2012 to 2018 later he served as a state president from 2018 to 2022 currently he serves as the zonal president for the east zone comprising of odisha west bengal sikkim jharkhand 
and Bihar. On the professional front, Sri Narayan Prasad sir holds a degree in commerce and is a practicing practicing chartered accountant and is having his own firm at Bhuvaneshwar. Today, we once again invite him to share his rich experiences and knowledge of being associated with Bhagwan in a very devout and dedicated way on his learnings regarding Vedas being the foundation of Indian culture and spirituality. Over to Sri Narayan Prasad, sir. Sairam. Om Sri Sairam, offering my humble pranams at His Divine Lotus Feet. All the listeners, viewers who are watching this episode of Gama Agama by our national weather team, loving Sairam to one and all. And uh, first of all, um, we are in a period of festivities, a period of Matrupasana when we reverently offer our gratitude to Mother Sai. Recently, we have uh, this Navaratri festival, uh, this Kali Puja is on the offing. So this is a time of offering our obeisance to the mother Sai, the Veda Mata, the Jagan Mata. So let us all collectively offer our gratitude at our Sai Mas Lotus Feet. Brothers and sisters, this really is a wonderful initiative by the Sayyukta Sukti Srini that has been uh, running through this monthly webcast of uh, Gama Agama in which noted scholars, speakers from Vedic philosophy, they enlighten us in this uh, noble venture because we are fostered by Vedas. Someone was asking me one day while I was uh, practicing some Vedic texts. Uh, he asked me, what do you mean by Veda? And I was dumbfounded with his question. Immediately, I could not uh, guess any answer. And uh, then I sporadically, I gave him some uh, definition of what is meant by Veda and all. And suddenly he interrupted me and told me, Veda is the constitutions, constitution of the universe. So that is how Veda has pervaded the whole world. It has enveloped our life. It is in each one of us. It is around each one of us. Therefore, 
Veda encompasses the whole humanity, the whole human kind. Not only the human kind, it encompasses the all the lokas, the brahmanda, and it is enveloping us like a sky. Like sky is around us, sky is inside us, sky is everywhere. But we hardly realize the existence of sky. Similarly, Vedas are in us, around us, above us. But it is paramount, of paramount importance for all of us to know the origin that is Veda, to know the destination that is Veda and to know the path from the origin to destination that is Veda. So Veda is it, it is all about that, the origin, the path and the destination. So we as human being we take birth from our mother's womb and with all the samskaras that we have accumulated over previous lives and along with the samskaras that our parents, our societies, our friends, our circle gives us, we lead a life. But without knowing our destination, without knowing our goal, how can we proceed? And what is the purpose of life then? If we do not know, where is our goal? So is it all about achieving some mundane things in the world? Is it about achieving some uh, prestige, some uh, you know, felicitations. So we have to understand our origin, the source, where we have to go back. It is just like uh, we can uh, simply understand it as Bhagavan explains um, through a beautiful example that the source of water is the ocean and this water of ocean goes back to form a cloud and this cloud condenses to form the droplets. The droplets fall on a hilltop and joining with other droplets it forms a small stream of water. This small stream becomes a fall in the due course and that takes the shape of a river and this river right from the hilltop, it goes on and it knows its dest destination. The destination is, is its origin, that is the ocean. So it has to go back to the ocean. In that direction, it saves its path. It doesn't mean that all the waters of the river go and meet with the origin, its destination, that is the ocean. It is not like that. We use the water of river for plantation, for cultivation, for our uh, plants, uh, for various purposes. Some Sometimes flood comes and some water gets diverted. But the river uh, knows its uh, destination and it goes in a uh, giving, I mean facing all the obstructions in its life, it goes back to meet the ocean that is its origin. And remember brothers and sisters, when the river meets the ocean, it is for that drop of water that meets the, its destination and fulfills its life, attains fulfillment of its life. But the whole river through this process, it, uh, it has given us, uh, given all the droplets that has to come from the sky, it has given a path to its origin. And that is what Veda plays a role in our life. The sages, the drashtas, who have, who, to whom the mantras were revealed, that is why they are called the seers, because they could see in their inner eyes the mantras, and they could meet the origin, the destination. To their source and for the humankind they have given us the path as to how to reach so that impression that river has created all the future droplets are to face the same stream 
in order to go go back to the ocean similarly the sages and the seers who have through their deep meditation tapas they have attained this uh, fulfillment of their life out of their compassionate heart they have not erased everything they have contributed that to the human kind for the future generation to follow that and to attain fulfillment so the fact that the springs of our lives all our human race the lives of all our uh, our previous lives it dates back to innumerable lives in, in the past and in this life we got this unique wonderful opportunity of redeeming our life because purna brahma paripurna avatar bhagavan sri satya sai baba descended on earth as our contemporaries who is the veda swarupa himself who has taught us the vedic way of life who has taught us how to imbibe vedas in our life and attain fulfillment how to how to go back to his lotus feet that path he has shown us so this uh, we must uh, always remember that this is a very unique opportunity which uh, if lost it may not come I, we do not know for how many lives we may be like those droplets who dried up because they could not join other droplets to form a stream because they could be they could uh, they got diverted from the river uh, to the uh, fields to the plants or through the flood water so they could not meet the destination so our lives may be one among them so we should be very very careful and that is the reason why the um, vedic text the vedic practice uh, it enchants us so much in this life because swami his avataric mission has a very predominant goal of this veda portion that was his mission he he himself has declared that it was very important mission swami now let us come to why and how we should learn this veda i think this today's discussion we can uh, confine in it into three parts basically uh, and it will be in a very generic terms we'll analyze the first one being to learn veda why swami has emphasized us to learn veda and secondly to practice the vedic injunctions and not to do the vedic prohibitions there are two things in vedas uh, one is injunctions what you should do and the prohibitions what we should not do so how we can practice that in our life and finally how to be one and how to see the whole creation as his manifestation to see the unity in the multiplicity multiplicity of this world so th- these three segments basically will um will uh, discuss today na swami in uh, sri satya sai vedavani uh, in the chapter where he was delivering on atma gyana he said the whole essence of vedic wisdom lies in realizing the unity in the multiplicity so we are all one eko hum bahushyam and ekatma sarva bhutantar atma this is the concept this is the realization for which we do now what is the what is the dimension of this plurality what is the dimension of this multiplicity let us just just think of i mean there are so many worlds uh, we know that there are uh, bhulokas pitrulokas rishi lokas brahma lokas you know deva lokas um, yaksha lokas gandharva lokas there are so many lokas are there we we pray samasta loka sukhino bhavantu in our prayer now is that all and each loka 
what would be the size of that loka now we we consider earth as a loka now we cannot we have not seen the whole of the world we have been in a very small piece of land hardly we could have visited some places in the world it is so big now is it the only world in this world no there are as many worlds in this world as the number of minds in this world let let us uh, let us uh, understand this now every each one of us we have created a world of our own through our mind through our perception we we have one world inside us that manifests outside had it not be then how could i see something differently from a person other than me let us let us say somebody mr x whom i like so much but the other person dislikes him now why why it is that because we both have different perceptions about that person so some people say uh, you know this world is full of nonsense uh, you know every day we see all these bad news in newspaper print media electronic media and so and there are some people who says this creation is so beautiful i see god's hand in everything so then definitely there is a different world for me and for that person who sees the world in a different perspective altogether so my eyes like bhagwan used to give that example of duryodhana and yudhishthira uh, and uh, duryodhana was asked uh, to find a uh, good pe- good person and uh, he went around and said no i could not find a very any good person other than me so uh, and yudhishthira on the other hand was asked uh, to find out a bad person and he went around and reported that i could not find a bad person other than me so this is how we look this is how we perceive thing and this is how we create our one own world it is not a dream it's the same world in which we live and each person has a separate world so see the diversity of this plane itself now let us see let us think of the uh, nature the god in our uh, sanatana hindu religion we uh, it is said that there are some 33 crores of gods and goddesses now what is this if god can be realized by one single name one single form then what what is the need of this 33 crore uh, gods and goddesses so that is the plurality that is the beauty of his creation now he has created this whole world with absolute diverse terms so that we we can pass through we can comprehend we can overcome all these diversities and realize him so that is the beauty of god's creation so let us go back to our basics and let us focus on with this uh, lokas uh, because i thought i should uh, i should tell a little about this now coming to the learning part who can learn veda who has the primitive qualification to learn veda bhagwan says everybody because veda is our self we the whole creation was created out of vedas so veda is in our life life spring so we cannot nobody is prohibited from uh, learning veda that is one thing bhagwan has given a very good example now bhagwan says just because this gravity uh, force of gravity was discovered by some scientist in uh, some country can you say the gravitational force of the earth belongs to that country itself no it is for the whole earth similarly even though the indian sages they discovered they revealed the vedic mantras to the mankind it is for the whole mankind to learn vedas and brothers and sisters i think no no previous sages no previous godman no previous avatar has done so much 
ઉપરથી પ્રભા કેસનો વેદા ના સ્વામી ઇન હિઝ અવતારિક લાઈફ સ્પાન હેઝ મેડ વેદાસ યુનિવર્સલ નાવ વી હેડ પીપલ ફ્રોમ કન્ટ્રીઝ લાઈક જપાન વન્સ વેદનારાયણ સાર વોઝ ટેલિંગ દે હેવ સમ આલ્ફાબેટ્સ ઇન વેદાસ વિચ ઇન ધ જપાનીઝ લેંગ્વેજ દે ડુ નોટ હેવ સો જસ્ટ ઇન ઓર્ડર ટુ લર્ન વેદાસ દે કુડ they could learn that uh, that vocal that phonetic also just in order to learn veda in the countries like russia they they have conducted you know atirudras and all mahajagya and all so this kind of propagation was never made in the history of human society for the first time and there were so many myths about vedas like some ancient practices were there they said oh, oh, women cannot chant vedas um, the uh, sudras cannot chant vedas and all this you know all this ridiculous practices were going on and swami for the first time caught across all the religion and nationality and made vedas universally accessible and and practicable to each one of us that is the highest boon bhagwan has given to the human society now coming to the learning part swami says veda is we all know that it has come from the uh, dhatu vid and uh, vid means we all know that it is vidya now in vidya vahini which has been penned by bhagwan himself in that forward professor n kosti writes vidya means ya vid and vid has been explained like enlightenment that which enlightens us that is called vidya it is not like achieving something yes vidya there are defi- there are you know para vidya and apara vidya apara vidya is all the um you know physical logic of vidyas that we know like the physics like chemistry and like uh, science and all this mathematics and uh, maybe astronomy whatever you say you can say that is all apara vidya and the real vidya what bhagwan teaches us is the atma vidya knowing that you know that the same vadatma sarvabhut antaratma the same god the same divine principle resides in all the animate and inanimate things in the world and it is a question of realization that is why bhagwan says that you should listen to vedas you should listen to vedas and learn it that is why it is called shruti and as far as the meaning is concerned bhagwan bhagwan uh, in his mission of propagation of veda preliminarily confined it to practice the chanting of veda properly why now veda has a vast meaning it has a deeper meaning many uh, professors they have given so many explanation to the different vedantas upanishads and all but that is a vyaksha only that is a explanation only now see if we see in the vedantic philosophy there are many like uh, sayana bhatavaskara vishnu suri and all them they have given lot of meaning uh, to the vedic text now can it be applicable to me why bhagwan says that you should always focus on chanting veda properly with proper intonation with proper pronunciation you should chant vedas because it is shuddha and uh, this vocal it directly connects to the brahma because our vak is uh, it is um, symbolizes the agni the fire element we in the lagunya se we say agnir me vachishritah vak hridaye hridayam mai aham amrute e amrutam brahmani so you know that vak is pure like fire fire is the purest of all and whatever impurity comes across it it purifies it 
uh, it, it uh, makes it uh, ashes to, to ashes so from that perspective we see that our bark is the purest of everything we, if we can purify the bark then we can definitely purify our heart and once that purification dawns on us then divinity automatically dawns on us that is why bhagwan says you have to practice chanting of vedas there is another facet to it now once we start chanting or listening even even if we cannot chant if we listen then also that power power of mantras that connects our uh, our inner being with that ultimate being that our destination and through that connection this mantras reveal to us their light so each mantras for each sadhaka might have a different meaning altogether instead of going through the explanation and various arguments and tarkas uh, and mimamsas what we call in the vedantic text like purva mimamsa uttara mimamsa and all without delving into that yes that is required that is required for our knowledge but swami has emphasized that once we chant the vedas with proper uh, you know bhava and uh, proper pronunciation and intonation the mantra reveals its meaning to us the mantra shows the way to us so from that perspective it is very important now coming to the shiksha part of this veda which uh which teaches us how to learn veda it only have a vyaksha that is why it is called shikshaṁ vyākhya syāmah so they in the taitari upanishad the shiksha valli they have started to explain what is shiksha what is learning other than that there is no explanation sages they simply donated the mantras to the human kind they have not given any explanation to that explanation were done by the scholars in the later ages and it is according to them and according to what they could perceive but i think that is not universal maybe that is one of the reason why swami focuses on the perfect chanting of the vedas so uh, now this what is this shiksha valli teaches us you know in shiksha valli this perfect knowledge of veda it has been clearly elucidated if you will find there are five objects of contemplation contemplation in shiksha valli we call it as adhilokam adhi jyotisham adhi vidyam adhi prajam adhyatmam this is adhiloka adhi jyotisha adhi vidya adhi praja and adhyatma these are the five facets five objects of contemplation through with all the vedic texts all the chandas what in whatever chandas they have been uh, you know put into script before us it all confines into this five facets uh, universally globally that is the shiksha every vedic text have to be contemplated keeping in mind these five five aspects that is the plane that is uh, number 2 is the enlightenment the light then the knowledge and then the progeny and then the realization so that is why this this portion of shiksha valli is called maha samhita iti ma maha samhita that is what is true. and for each if you can if you see go through in that loka and for jyotisha for vidya and for praja and for adhyatma there are one purva loka and one uttara loka that is from where you start and where you reach that is the purva and uttara loka like for example uh, in case of adhi loka we have prithvi as the purva loka and dev antariksha as the uttara loka and there are one sandhi and one sandhanam one conjunction 
and one medium like uh, akasha sandhi vayu sandhanam so for each aspect of contemplation these these are the four things one is the purva loka or purva mimamsa in vedantic terms you can say and one is the uttara loka that is because when in this mimamsa part of this uh, tarkas in the uh, vedanta we find that initially to negate to negate the um, mantra or the portion of the text that is being argued upon so there are certain arguments to negate it and by going through these tarkas we arrive at a conclusion which is the enlightenment so that is how the purva mimamsa and uttara mimamsa are uh, generally usually um, so from that perspective also we have to see that this prithivi similarly next comes the jyotisham athadhi jyotisham in that agni purva rupam aditya uttara rupam apasandhi vaidyuta sandhanam this is what is called. now jyotisha means light in that agni is the purva loka agni purva rupam and aditya surya the sun it is the uttara rupa so both are light agni is the personification of light and the sun is also the personification of light and this light only gives us vidya because initially we discussed that vidya is the enlightenment that which enlightens us so from jyotisha comes the vidya so athate vidyam in which acharya is the purva rupam and antevasi that the shishya is the uttara rupam and vidya is the sandhi and pravachana is the medium so that is how vidya is and then comes the progeny and finally adhyatma in which the bak has been directly compared with the adhyatma that is the atma vidya it is directly connected to our bak and from that we can realize and we can emphasize why bhagwan gives so much importance to perfect chanting of veda so just to narrate this is all about now we know the shiksha the vyakaranas the you know chanda nirukta kalpa and jyotisha all this have been discussed also in the so i thought while learning vedas we must always think that i am in a plane and i get light through it and through this light i am enlightened with knowledge which i have to give back to this society through praja through my succession through my progeny and through which everybody will attain brahma that is that is the whole idea of the vedic text so keeping this clue in mind we should uh chant vedas we should learn vedas i never uh, uh, forgive me if i my whatever i said that gives a meaning that we should not uh, research on the vedic text no it is not like it is for the scholarly persons they can definitely delve into that deepness and get the pearls out of it it is fine but for ordinary people like us we have to uh initially we have to keep focus on chanting the veda because we know that we have no other recluse than veda we are no, because veda only can give us redemption of this life so we have to adore vedas many people uh, in our contemporary society they adore veda because they know from their generation that veda was adored by the human society especially in india that is why in each house we find a vedic anyway let, let us not go into that but as far as the learning of veda is concerned once we the conclusion is once we uh, start uh, chanting the vedas it has the impact it, it has the impact at the level of its sound 
at the level of its meaning and its at the level of its deeper feelings that touches our heart with bhava when whenever we chant veda we visualize our sai ma as the veda mata and we offer that to our bhagwan then definitely we can realize that now coming back to uh, let us put a full stop into uh, to learning and let us come to the practicing part because swami says this sabda and karma this will only spread happiness in the world so in uh, bhagwan says that this dhvani that you get from veda and the activities the karma you do so for karma you have to do what the veda prescribes us like let us say in yajur vedas the ritualistic practice like the pancha yagyas that bhagwan has clearly initiated like you know bhuta yagya deva yagya rishi yagya and all that so all these we have to do in life and we have to practice that it is not that we have we we should not uh, go into the mundane activities of the world yes we have to do we have to do a living we have to have a family we have to nurture them everything we have to do but our focus should be on that ultimate destination ultimate goal for which we have been given this sacred life now coming back to this uh, paravidya and uh, aparavidya um, which is aparavidya is the lokika vidya as i told and paravidya is the highest form of knowledge that is the atma vidya or brahma vidya whatever name we ascribe to them it is like swami beautifully says that um, you do not consider these two as separate this is my uh parthiva karma that is my in the physical plane i have to do and this is what i have to do inside my puja room life cannot be like uh, a dual path like that so bhagwan says this samsara and ishwar they should not be treated aside they should not be treated as two separate things like in the in the puja room in, in front of the deity we meditate we read some sacred text and we allo- allocate some time for god as if as if god needs some time and we allocate some specific time like 15 minutes one hour whatever and we say that is our uh, divine karma that is our uh, and, um, uh, rituals and whatever practices and next then we forget god and we get into the regular routine activities of our so that is not the thing bhagwan says in isha isha upanishad bhagwan says avidyaya mrutyam teertva vidyam amrutam asnute so this avidya is what bhagwan in the isha vasya upanishad it has been treated as the laukika vidya or the apara vidya and vidya is the para vidya so it says through avidya that is the apara vidya you can cross the death you can definitely overcome your death but you cannot get into the plane of immortality you cannot get into that realization without vidya that is the para vidya so this both we have to take it together in that samsara we have we have to realize ishwar so bhagwan gives a beautiful example like in one cup you have uh, tea tea without sugar of course and in another bowl you have uh, sugar so how to take the tea now swami says if you take one spoon of tea and then you take little bit of sugar put it in into your mouth and can you taste the um, can you relish the taste of tea no so what is the solution then swami says you take that sugar uh, two spoons of sugar and add it to the tea without sugar and churn it properly you have to churn it properly then only you can relish the taste of the tea similarly do not keep ishwara and samsara in two identifiable separate compartments rather you mix ishwara with samsara like in the samsara of tea 
add the sugar of ishwara and mix it properly rinse it properly so that in every bit of your uh, worldly activities you can release the taste of the divinity that is why this organization bhagwan has created sri satya sai seva organization the fundamental principle of this organization as the object enunciated by bhagwan himself it gives us the idea as to how to realize divinity bhagwan says the fundamental objective of this organization is to realize the inner divinity that is inside us that is well inside us everybody there is nobody in which uh, in whom the divinity is not there but it is important to realize that and to express that through our action and deeds and speech and that is by following the fundamental principle of satya dharma shanti prema ahimsa that is how bhagwan so it is not simply a uh, organization where many activities are done many seva is being done so many crores of rupees are being spent it is not that the fundamental object is through all these we realize the inner divinity and swami only gives a beautiful example in uh, satya sai vahini if i remember correctly uh, bhagwan beautifully has explained this bhagwan says you know the order of the cow has milk in fact milk is there in the whole body of the cow which we get the milk through the order in that milk which is very much present in the cow's body that uh, that milk has the all the qualities of the ghee the uh, the curd the butter and the ghee but that milk though in in its body it cannot give any benefit to the cow so in order to get benefited through that milk which is already in the cow what you have to do you have to milk the cow then you have to convert that milk into curd then you have to churn it then you have to get butter out of it and then you will get ghee out of it and then that ghee you feed to the cow definitely it will augur its uh, it will augment its health and the nutrients all the benefits the cow will get and we will also get through cow's ghee this this i think the whole vedantic philosophy has been given in this very small and beautiful example by swami we all have divinity in us we know that and howsoever we read bhagwan's book or any mahatma sages book everybody says that divinity is in everybody without divinity we are like shiva with divinity we are shiva so in fact in fact they say that in the inanimate objects also in all the jadas and chaitanya in inanimate things also divinity is there but in a sleeping state so it has no capacity to realize that but human has the capacity to realize its divinity but realization is not by reading texts and keeping it in the brain it is not realization it is only assimilation it is only accumulation it is just like acquiring some wealth or some property or some uh, merits or some prestige from outside it is the same thing if we acquire some merits some uh, you know that is called uh, panditya uh, we we become uh, we make our brain a storehouse of so so many uh, text knowledge and at best what we can do with that howsoever wise we are at best we can give some lectures we can uh, read uh, write some books and we can earn millions also but that in no way it will give us realization realization is something when i realize that me and the divinity inside me that is i am not this body i am not this mind i am not this intellect i am that and that which is in me that is in everything around me so that is a state only that is not any accumulation or acquisition or achievement brother and sister so bhagwan through this example bhagwan has said that 
though divinity is in within us what we have to do we have to extract it we have to extract it through our action through through our speech through our vision through all the senses of perception we have to extract it we have to churn it we have to churn it and get the butter out of it and to get the ultimate ghee out of it that is the realization so unless otherwise it is flourished that is the blossoming of the human kind you know so practice without practice this all this learnings of vedas is only a primary step in the primary step of the ladder to reach and realize divinity so bhagwan has uh, given uh, enough you know you, you can say um, how uh, we realize divinity and when uh, what is the proof what is the proof that i have attained uh, divinity i cannot go on sp- uh, speaking i have attained divinity with a loud speaker so the sages the elevated souls who have realized this divinity they became mum so they became silent they became always introvert always their journey is inside them and they are in a state of bliss absolute bliss and whenever we go and approach them what is this now their silence only gives the answer yato vacha nivartante aprapya manasa sa is that is what so when you get that then you cannot go to that with the with the mind you have to go to that with your heart and soul so that is that is the state we have to reach that but to go to that state we all cannot bhagwan has not advised us to all of you go to rishikesh or himalayas and do meditation tapas to realize me no in this world treating this world as his manifestation as his plurality and treating everything as his amsa mamai vang sojiva loke bhagwan bhagavad gita has said and many of one bhagwan used to tell this because because bhagwan he because he is param brahma through his actions if you see his 85 years of avatar road it was only in that direction he traded a path full full of sincerity full of discipline full of commitment his mission his goal cannot be defeated by any means so with that bhagwan leaded that life and so so to us and during his human like this this uh, life of uh, you know blood and flesh that bhagwan with his divine body he acquired that bhagwan many often gave us a glimpse of his omnipresence him his omnipotence bhagwan has given us once um, bhagwan was uh, interacting with his uh, students and uh, suddenly uh, he called one boy hey you come up and that boy immediately uh, stood up and came to bhagwan bhagwan uh, told him to stand near him and all the students were sitting um, in the front and swami suddenly asked this student who was side by bhagwan said now tell me who is taller you or me now this was a very embarrassing question to the student of course and uh, um, he could not suddenly he was not expecting this question from bhagwan not only him all the all the pupils those were sitting in front they were also perplexed with this question and they were just thinking what our friend will answer to this question bhagwan is asking who is taller you or me now frankly speaking uh, bhagwan was taller to this boy if his this crown of hair is taken into account and minus that bhagwan is smaller to that boy in height so after bhagwan's uh, repeated questions this boy has to give a answer and finally he said swami you are taller so all his friends they were relaxed at least he had given a satisfactory questions bhagwan laughed and suddenly he became silent and said i am not taller 
I am not smaller. I am anoraniyan mahato mahiyan. I am the smaller than the smallest. I am the bigger than the biggest. So, so in this human plane, working with us, Bhagavan suddenly used to give us uh, that glimpse of his ever, uh, you know, ever engulfing that divinity. Bhagavan used to show us. So we we should not forget that also. And because we are contemplating him through all this, all this learning, all this practice, whatever we do, we have to do it with Bhagavan. Bhagavan says, what merit did Ramakrishna, Paramahansa, uh, Mirabai, Sakubai, all this? They didn't have any merit of that scholarship. They didn't have. But their contemporary wise men of those times, they are forgotten by the human society. But these sages, people take their name with reverence today also because they got hold of the divine lotus feet. They had no other desire other than to get, other than to immerse, other, other than to immerse at his divine lotus feet and become one with the divinity. So with that, they did all the work of the society. I, we have heard many sages who had taken uh, non veg food, uh, being a guru also. But that doesn't, uh, you know, um, Bhagavan uh, Sri Ram, uh, he also partook the food already tested by Savari. So, whatever activity we do, it doesn't matter. It gets sanctified once we are one with our Swami in our mind and heart. So, that is the lesson, I think, the, from the uh, for all the Vedic scholars and because that is the uh, that is the essence of Indian culture and uh, spirituality to realize God in everyone, each one around us, and to realize God as one amongst us in our Basri Sathya Sai Balvikas. The student they are taught this this yes, God exists, Deva Unnad. God exists, and God doesn't exist only in me, God exists in every being around me. That is the highest knowledge, but. It is not to speak of the mouth. It is not to be comprehended through the brain. It is not to be perceived through the sense, but it has to be realized in the heart. And in that realization, we lose ourselves. That is the last stage when being is lost in becoming. Our being, this body, mind, intellect, whatever is the, the antakarana, everything, it is lost. We are nowhere. We are that spark of divinity has merged with that. And in that bliss, in that divine bliss, we we walk in the street, we scold somebody, we do something, everything it becomes sanctified, it becomes purest of the pure. Uh, that is why in the Upachara Puja we say that that Apovitro Pavitrova Sarvavastangato Piva. Yasmaret Satyasaisa Sa Bhaya Bhantara Suchi. So whether that impurity or purity is not in us, if we remember we are in the constant contemplation of Satyasai, then our Bhaya, that is our outer being, and the Abhyantara, that is our inner being, it gets sanctified. I remember once um, Vedanarayan sir was. Uh, um, taking some audition and suddenly he was telling that uh, our scholars, they do some uh, dosha while chanting. And I was just thinking, what is dosha? Dosha means we, we as we understand it is something bad or something a sin or something, uh, you know, wrong we do. That is called dosha. But for a Veda party, for a Vedic learner, the only dosha is wrong chanting of Vedic mantras because they cannot do anything wrong other than that because they are deeply immersed in that they have to always they um, they listen to their own voice and see that the chanting has the vibration to melt the heart of Swami so we all devotees we all his uh, we have taken shelter in his lotus feet and this Veda is very very essential very very useful for us 
sooner or later we are going to merge with them. Let us think from the starting start point where we started. We are all divine droplets, and one day whether we dry up, whether we divert, one day we have to merge in that divinity. Till the time we merge with our Bhagwan, so we have no rest. We have to come birth after birth and do the same thing. But this birth. is very very precious to us and we all should uh, pray bhagwan that let us redeem our life merge us in him and let us let us there let there be no birth and let all the society be happy so when we can eradicate the suffering of the society bhagwan says तरति शोकाम आत्मविद सो उपनिषद उपनिषद एक टेक्स्ट भगवान हैज कोटेड मेनी टाइम्स हु इज आत्मविद हु स्टेज इन हिज आत्मा इट इज कर्मेंद्रियस दे मूव आउटसाइड बट द रियल बीइंग इज ऑलवेज विद द आत्मा ही इज कॉल्ड आत्मविद सो ही हैज नो शोका so once we are out of soka then we can remove the suffering of all and let us not be selfish that i myself will only be uh, merge uh, merging with bhagwan no it is not like that we have to take all along because they are all our divine brothers and sisters he is the only father and we are all his children so we have to take them along and first of all that tarati soka we, we should not have any anxiety any soka so that can be possible only we are fixed at our atma and that is possible if we get the atma vidya and that is only possible when we learn and practice the vedas the vedas the their prohibitions shraddhaya deyam asraddhaya adeyam now one is called a injunction and one is called a prohibition this you should do this you should not do it has been very clearly identified and in the vedic text there is it needs no elaboration no explanations we can simply follow that in our life and always contemplating on our destination on our goal bhagwan's lotus feet we can definitely cross the ocean of life and get the blessings of bhagwan so i thought uh, to summarize uh, in my whatever little um, talk i i thought i should uh, i should uh, give a um, give a bird's eye view of this three facets of a vedic scholar that is to learn and to practice and to be so i do i do not know i am i am not a very uh, scholar in veda but whatever bhagwan has said uh, that only can be the rightest explanation of vedic text so <clears throat> that only i have referred into and uh, whatever mistakes or i have used my own uh, intellect or mind to say something and i go wrong i beg uh, forgiveness at his divine lotus feet and i offer this uh, small talk at his divine lotus feet may god bless you all samasta loka sukhino bhavantu om shri sai ram om shri sai ram on behalf of all the participants and on the behalf of sri satyasai samyukta shruti shreni of the satyasai seva organization it is indeed a matter of great privilege for me to thank profusely sri narayan prasad sir for giving his valuable time and sharing his precious knowledge and experience on his learnings about vedas with all of us sri narayan ji has started his talk on the note of importance and universality of vedas 
he has elaborated on the road map of vedas being the origin the path and the destination and aptly illustrated it with a wonderful example of oceans clouds rain rivers going back to ocean and map them to god sages rastas human being being the beneficiaries and the veda vedic messages leading them back to god sri narayan ji has reminded us on the unique opportunity that we have been blessed to be the contemporaries of sai avatar and reminded us not to waste it and to utilize it to the best of the opportunity and very carefully next he delved in detail on three very important aspects how to learn vedas and who can learn vedas how and why to practice vedic injunctions and not to do vedic prohibitions the do's and the don'ts of from veda next he elaborated on the unity in diversity aspect while dealing with how to learn vedas he has touched upon the shruti aspect the discipline and the dedication here he connected it to the message from sikshavali on pancha swadhikaraneshu the five important aspects being universe light learning progeny and self or self realization while dealing with who can learn vedas he has elaborated that vedas are for all just as gravitational forces exist everywhere though discovered by a scientist so to vedas which has been perceived by sages or men for one and all during the discussion on the practicing aspect of vedas he has nicely brought in the concept of para and apara vidya and explained on their integral and complementary nature that they cannot be separated they are one and they are supportive to each other and reminded us on the examples from bhagwan's speeches and writings like swami has always said that by adding sugar to tea sweetness can be enjoyed in every sip while tea is like para vidya sugar is apara vidya they are integral to give once they are integral and complementary then it can be enjoyed he has also nicely referred to the head in the forest and hands in the society teaching of swami and the lesson imparted to balgas children for integrating these two branches of knowledge the para and apara vidyas the wonderful example that he has narrated from sri satyasai vahini on milk getting transformed to curd butter ghee and when the ghee processed ghee when it is fed back to the cow it gives it full health thereby he has emphasized that human endeavor is needed to manifest the divinity which is within him he has nicely brought out the message that human endeavor is very much needed to manifest the divinity within him and he has gloriously ended his talk on the note of anoraniyam mahato mahiyam the great vedic truth on bhagwan and with the swami's message 
that they would not do thus he tried to bring home the three important aspects of how to learn vedas and who should learn vedas how to practice it and the unity in diversity aspect of vedas sir we are extremely thankful to you for sharing your precious knowledge it is indeed my privilege to thank you on behalf of all the participants and on behalf of the satsai samyukta shruti shreni for generously sharing your knowledge and sparing your valuable time we all pray to our dear lord sai to bless you and your family abundantly and to take you forward with greater energy to serve him forever in your life jai sai ram ओम जय जगदीश हरे स्वामी सके साई हरे भक्त जना संरक्षक भक्त जना संरक्षक पति महेश्वर ओम जय जगदीश हरे शशि वदना श्री करा सर्वा
भगवान श्री सत्य साई बाबा जी की